open-ended questions for sales that can get you outstanding results. In this video, which has been taken from the salesman.org archives, you're gonna learn the structure of both open and close-ended questions, and how using both of them is gonna lead you to getting more deals closed quicker as you're gonna be more effectively able to influence your potential customers. Question construction. So before we get super practical, about the questions I want you to ask within your selling conversations. Let's take a quick look at the structure of great selling questions. So close-ended questions start with what we call helper verbs, and each close-ended question can be answered with a yes or a no, as we already touched on. These close-ended starter words could be am, are, is, was, were, have, do, does, would, will, should, may, might, can, could, and many more. <laughs> <laughs> go down a rabbit hole with those words. Open-ended starter words tend to um, begin with a W of who, what, were, when, why, and the one that doesn't follow the W rule, how. The best way to visualize using closed versus open-ended questions, in my mind, is to imagine you're talking to a really freaking old person. So if you only used open-ended questions, you could start the conversation trying to get from one place to another, but you'll go down all kinds of rabbit holes. You'll find out where they were evacuated to in the war. You'll, you'll end up uncovering a biography of their children's first 18 years living at home. You'll find out all about their dogs, their cats, their goats, their squirrels, all kinds of weird pets. And whilst it might be a pleasant conversation, you're going to have a wide, wide but shallow conversation and a, a, a wide but shallow understanding of their lives. Heck, if you, if you just keep asking open-ended questions to an old person, if, you know, if they're a bit lonely, the conversation might never end. <laughs> this is probably a YouTube video for Mr. Beast or someone like that to do a 24-hour quest, open-ended question questioning session with an old dude. Now, alternatively, if you asked only closed-ended questions, the conversation would be over within five minutes and you wouldn't really have learned anything either. So, to control the conversation, keep it on track, you need to both mix open-ended questions and closed-ended questions throughout the discussion. In total, there are three phases, typically, to the sales questioning process. Number one, we have uncovering questions. So these are at the top of the funnel. Next, we have consensus questions. These are at the middle of the funnel. And then we have concrete questions. And these come at the end of the funnel. So typically, at the top of the funnel, we're asking more open-ended. And as we narrow down to the middle and the end of the funnel, we're going to get more and more close-ended questions into the conversation. So let's wrap up this video by running through each of these phases in a little bit more detail, and I'll share why the direction of the questions in each phase is separate and interesting as well. So top of the funnel, we have uncover questions. We're going to use uncover questions at the top of the funnel because at this point in the conversation, we're just trying to reveal information that allows us to see if our product is a good fit for the potential partner. We're trying to qualify them, right? So examples here could be what goals do you have for the year? What is your top priority? What is the impact of these goals if they're not achieved? Next, we have consensus questions, and these come in the middle of the funnel. At this point, we are trying to see if there's consensus between the risks, challenges, and concerns that the buyer has, which we've just uncovered, and if there's anything that we can do to help them with these issues, pains, and concerns. So finding a consensus is critical. It's a crucial stage of the selling process, and it just often gets skipped over. But when we dive in deep here, it really sets up the next phase and makes the close a lot easier as well. So an example of a consensus question could be, how do you measure your ROI? By not making a switch to us, whoever, how does that impact the business? How does the ideal situation that we've discussed compare to your current situation? And then finally, we have concrete questions. These come at the end of the funnel. You can see these are getting more and more closed now. We use concrete questions at the end of the funnel to secure the close. And at this point in the sale, we're trying to create specific examples of what we can and what we can't do. We also need to work out how the decision's going to be made. So a few examples. How soon are you thinking about changing suppliers? What other options are you considering? What criteria will you use to decide the new provider? So there's a few examples for you. And it's not enough just to learn a series of questions and read them off a script during a sales conversation. That is why I've explained the structure of all this. That's why I've gone a little bit more in detail than what most people do, so that you understand how these questions work. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click subscribe. Leave a comment below what you thought about the video and the content itself. 
and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.